<laughs> Why, howdy there. Welcome to Mower Mike's Garage. Check out my new hat, super cool. Today, today we're gonna talk about why is your lawnmower smoking? Now, a lot of people, when they get a smoking lawnmower, they immediately put it on Facebook for $100. A guy like me comes by, buys it for $100, fixes it, sells it for like $700. Don't be that person, okay? Let's talk today about why your mower is smoking and some quick fixes to fix your mower so you don't have to sell it to a guy like me who makes $500 on your lawnmower. That's happened before. Now, I have worked on a lot, a lot of smoky mowers. And the first thing you wanna do is look at the smoke, the easy analysis. Now, smoke comes in a lot of different colors. Your typical smoke would be a real dark black smoke. And what does dark black smoke mean? That is not burning oil, that is actually fuel getting past the exhaust valve and into the exhaust and shooting out. That is unburnt fuel. For example, when you see a diesel truck running rich, rolling coal, as we say down here in Texas, that is unburnt fuel going out through the exhaust. It is not a good thing. Now, what could be causing that? A lot of different issues. Usually some sort of, well, of course, a fuel issue, carburetor issue, could be a weak spark, uh, several different things. Now, another issue could be a thick white smoke or almost like a bluish smoke. What that means is that your mower is burning oil. So it is oil seeping in somewhere it should not be seeping into and getting inside that combustion chamber and going boom, 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 and burning oil. So now a couple other things you can do for analysis. Uh, you can look at the exhaust. If your mower is really burning a lot of oil, it will have oil dripping out of the exhaust or if it's burning a whole lot of extra fuel shooting out of there, uh, you can see actually fuel coming out the exhaust. Just do not touch it. You can also look at your spark plug. Uh, real light, white spark plug means it's running lean. If it's kind of shiny looking, real dark, that means it's uh, too much uh, gas flowing through there. And then if it just looks crusty like a piece of coal, that's probably burning oil. All right, so we got past that. Now I'm gonna show you the number one reason that I have found why engines are burning oil on these lawnmowers. And I've, <laughs> I've worked on a lot of smoky lawnmowers. And this is probably three quarters of them why it's burning oil. It's the oil level, that's what it is. These motors, especially the Briggs and Stratton's single cylinders are very susceptible to smoking when they have too much oil in it because they take such a small amount of oil, a lot of people just wanna either fill this thing all the way up to the top, which do not do. You can't just throw an extra quart in these like thinking it's like your car. These things are very sensitive, they're very small. So, first thing you do if you're burning, if you're smoking, is check the, uh, check the dipstick, see where that oil level is. And when you check a dipstick, a hint uh, my father-in-law taught me is don't do a slow, slow jerk, do a quick jerk. That way it stays on there better. And what you're looking for here, oh, uh, look at that, let's see if it works. You wanna be between these two, two holes. One wants to be where you see oil in it and the other one not. As you can see, this one is actually a little low on oil. So we definitely do not have that issue because you can see through those holes. Again, that is the number one issue of a smoky motor. Now next, if you're, if you, that looks good and you're confident that uh, you've got the right amount of oil in there. If you don't, go ahead and drain a little bit out. Actually, go ahead and just change the oil. Drain it all out, put the correct amount in there and give it another shot and I bet you'd be good to go. If that does not fix your issue and you are blowing a thick white smoke, then I suggest a leak down test. Now a lot of people want to do compression tests they're just not as reliable on these small motors. They vary quite a bit based on temperature. I like to do a compression check. It is a, a much more foolproof method. Now, we're gonna go into the, uh, no, I like to do the leak down test. So we're gonna go next into showing you the leak down test. And I do have to apologize. My cinematography, I don't even know if that's the right word. Uh, my camera got a little dirty, so it's not quite as clear as you're used to on lower mic, but uh, it really wraps up really well. So stay with me and let's have a little fun and maybe we'll learn something too. All right, here's old Smokey. This here is a John Deere Z2250 turn with a 19.5 horse Intec Bridge of Stratton motor. And she is smoking like a freight chain, lots of black smoke. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do the cylinder leak down test. And to start, you need access to your valves. Now, the guys in Illinois, or Illinois, I don't even know how you say Illinois, who designed this lawnmower, they designed it so you cannot take the valve cover off. As you can see here, the valve cover, there's no clearance between this bar and the back. 
which is very, very frustrating. So for 90% of you, you should be able to just pop your valve cover off your brakes and do that without removing this engine from the lawnmower. But this being a John Deere lawnmower, for whatever reason, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this motor off. I'm not gonna show that to you, but if you wanna pull it off, you just unzip the PTO bolt on the bottom and there's four bolts, unhook everything and pull her off. So let's get this sucker pulled off and over to the uh, mower mic table and let's get started. What we're gonna run here is a cylinder leak down test. And the purpose for this is it tests where in that combustion chamber air is pushing out. And that way we can hear where the air is pushing out. So what this thing does is it compresses air into the combustion chamber at top dead center when everything's shut. And then you can see where it's coming out. Now it's a pretty nifty little tool. What you've got here is a regulator. So this hooks up to 50 to 100 PSI air, your little air tank, and then your regulator here, which you turn on slowly, and it can see how much air is going into the cylinder. And the way it works is it comes through here, this hose, and then you've got another hose, and this guy here screws into the spark plug ho hole. So you screw that guy in there, and it pressurizes it, and then you can actually hear where it's coming out. And it's a super, super cool test. Now, I've also failed several times with this test also because you need it at top dead center. So I set it up at top dead center and compression tested it, and I'm getting some funny readings. So let's go ahead and do it real quick and see what happens. I probably could have pre-screwed this hole, but sometimes... I know you guys like to see the screw, <laughs> me screwing live, which, you know, it's so, I just can't get, seem to get her straight. So hang on. Come on, take it. There you go. See, my issue was I had a, I had a bad angle on the screw job. There it goes. All right, so here we've got pressure tester. Now to set it up first, we've got the air coming through here. And what you have to do is set it to zero. So you start twisting this, twisting this. To start, you twist it all the way to the left, but now we're gonna slowly press it, see that? And you want that dial to go to the set area, which all the way to the right. That just shows she's ready to go and she's pressurized. So next we're going to hook it up and let's see what happens. So I've got this thing preset at top dead center. Now, if you don't know what top dead center is, uh, check out my other videos. I've got some great top dead center, but essentially it's when the Piston is at the top of the cylinder and everything's shut. So you can see here, shut, shut. These, these valves are not being pushed down at all. So we'll go ahead and hook her up. Whoa, now listen to that. Do you hear that? Air is coming out of here. So where we're looking for is either air coming out of the dipstick tube. That's gonna show you that air is leaking past the cylinder rings, which also would mean oil is leaking past the cylinder rings, or air is coming through the intake valve, it means you have a bad intake valve, or air is coming out of the exhaust valve, or air is coming out somewhere where the head gasket is. This is great for finding where the head gasket leak is, which sometimes be around here, around the cylinder, but also there's a lot of issues with the head gaskets right here, so you can hear it coming out of one of these holes here, and that means it's a head gasket issue. Now my problem, when I hook it up, it pressurizes the cylinder, but it also pushes that piston down just a touch, and it allows air to come out of the exhaust valve. See, so watch this. When I go like this, it just pushes that exhaust valve just a little bit, but check this out. It's kind of cool. I know this is basic stuff, but see that? We got leak. That's showing leaking when it's in the red. But if I turn the motor just a little bit, look at that. It goes back up. So the issue is it's turning the cylinder while I've got this thing hooked up to air. So what you can do to fix this, you can shove something in here to try to freeze the cylinder or you can take something underneath it like a pair of vice grips or something and try to hold the crankshaft from the bottom or maybe when you have the drive belt on your lawnmower it can hold it straight. None of that has worked for me so far. So instead of that, I am going to take the, the valve rockers off. I think I got the name right. This is pretty simple. It's just a 5 8 inch wrench. And it's always good to check your valve clearance anyway. So when we reinstall it, we will 
check our valve clearances. And really you can just loosen them up because we just want to take that pressure off the valves. See that? And let's go ahead and take these little cappers off here because I don't want to lose those guys. Make sure to not lose anything. So what we've got now, it really doesn't matter if it's in top dead center or not. <laughs> so it's going to shove that piston back down, but it should allow it for it to be uh, frozen up. So we're going to reset this. In order to reset it, we go all the way back to the left. All right, I know this is riveting stuff. This is the first time I've done this correctly with a sh really a shut, what do we call it, cylinder. So I'm pretty freaking weirdly excited about this. All right, so we're going to shove this in here. All right, and then what you can do, you just crank it up. So we're going to watch the pressure go up. Now, a lot of people say to put a full 100 PSI in there. Well, look at that. All right. So we're cranking, cranking, cranking. I can see this thing's holding pretty good. I, I see very minimal leakage at 30 PSI. Now when we crank it all the way up. You know, I hear nothing coming out of there. Nothing coming out of there. You know, there is some air coming out of this intake. And a little bit there. But as you can see, it's really within within range when you got 30 PSI in there. So we're gonna move on and I'm gonna try some one more thing on why this thing might be leaking. And I've got whoa, I've got an idea here. Now if you look at her, look at that thing. Now what looks funny? The fact that this thing sat in a cow field for about eight years before I got hold of it, you can see how rusty this uh, flywheel is, and this is the, the little magneto thing. So what happens every time this turns, it triggers it to shoot a spark. Now when they get rusty like this, that trigger can get weak or not a good trigger at all, which could cause it to smoke. So when you're not getting a good spark, it could cause you not to have a good spark, so it's not burning all the, f the fuel being sucked in there, which causes smoke. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and clean this guy up. We're gonna get a wire brush on her. And then I'm gonna throw this motor back in to the John Deere. How about that for some professional zero turn? I'll tell you what. I got this sucker purring like a kitten. Those hydros are spinning and she is just running like a top. Runs absolutely beautiful. Now, how did I get this specific mower to stop blowing smoke as you saw in the, uh, the first part of the video? Well, this mower had a weak spark. And because it had a weak spark, it means the fuel was going in there, but it was going out unburned. And it, so it was blowing out that black smoke. So for example, when you see a diesel rolling coal, which means for you people up north, that means it's blowing black smoke out. That is unburnt fuel. So not only could it be oil burning, but it also could be unburnt fuel, which was this specific issue. So if you're interested, I did a whole series on cleaning the coal, replacing the coil. Um, also did one on spark testers. I had a lot of fun with it. So I'll put the links down below and I'll put links everywhere, but go check them out. So I hope you had fun. Uh, this was a lot of fun for me. I learned a lot of things. Uh, but first of all, before you do anything, again, check your oil. That's going to solve three quarters of y'all's issues uh, real quick. Check the oil. And then if you want to do the leak down test, check that out. And then uh, do the spark test. That's always a good one to make sure you've got a good spark and make sure you're burning good. All right. So uh, let's move on to the next one here. So those of you who are interested, subscribe. I got a little teaser right there. You see a 20-year-old Gravely Zero Turn. Oh, yeah. We're going to get deep into that, dude. So with that, more mics out. See you all next round.